This is a demonstration of how to use the ZQ mass spectrometer with the DART source. So when you come to the instrument, everything may be closed. The first thing you want to do is to open the DART page to get the DART source started. So double click on the DART SVP link. It will open up a web page which will show the status of the DART source. When it's not in use, it should be off with the heater off. The first step would be to put it on standby and then to turn the heater on to an appropriate temperature. Um, colder is better for more fragile molecules. Higher may give you more signal, but at some point it will start to damage your molecule. Typically somewhere between 100 and 300 degrees C seems to be normal. I'm going to set it to 250. It will start ramping up the temperature and we need to wait for it to get up to the target temperature. While we're waiting for it, we can turn the vacuum pump on. There's a small vacuum pump that draws ions into the mass spectrometer. So down here we can turn on the vacuum pump. We can go back and watch the temperature ramping up. As the temperature is ramping up, we can uh, start up the mass spectrometer software. To start that, we click on mass links. Once the mass links main page has started, it will say connecting to instrument. And if everything is correct, it will say instrument present. After the page has finally opened, we should be able to get to MS Tune. So click on the MS Tune link. That will bring up this page. If the mass spectrometer is not already operating, you want to click this button to put the mass spectrometer in operation mode. If it's red, it's not operating. If we start it operating, the light should be green. And we may see some ions in the mass spectrometer. Um, the main setting that we want to adjust on this page is the cone voltage. Um, the optimal setting will depend on your sample. Uh, higher is better for some samples, lower is better for others. I'm going to leave it about 30 volts right now. Let's go back to the DART source and see how it's doing. So the temperature is now reached our target temperature of about 250 degrees C. We can switch the mode into run. When I switch it into run, it's going to change the gas from nitrogen to helium. We only want to leave it in run mode for a limited amount of time because it uses helium and we do not want to use too much helium. So when you're done running, be sure to put it back in standby mode so we are only using nitrogen. While it's running, we can switch it to positive ion mode or to negative ion mode. I'm going to show you positive ion mode right now. So in this case, the source is producing ions. It's on run, helium with positive ions. The temperature is set where we want. The connection is green, interlock is green, high voltage is on, and we have free run mode. So the source is producing ions. If we go back here, we can see that there's a lot more ions coming into the mass spectrometer. So now we want to start an acquisition. To do that, we can click the acquire button. Here we can put in a file name. This name needs to be one that's appropriate to be saved to disk. We can put in text based on what we want to uh, have saved with the data in terms of text. Continuum data format. We can set the mass range and then the run duration. This run is how long you want to uh, have it run while you put the sample into the instrument. This is all set reasonably. We can click Start. In this case, we already have a data set. We're going to overwrite it. So now this disappears and we're running. So we want to go back to the main page here and look at the chromatogram. We may want to expand to the full range and turn on the real-time update. So this is an update of the ions coming into the mass spectrometer, the total ion count. We can also bring up a spectrum, which will 
uh, use later to see the spec the data that, that we're collecting. So now we're looking at the chromatogram here and we can start to put the sample in. The sample is anything that goes in the gap between the source and the inlet of the mass spectrometer. So you can use a capillary, you could use a solid sample if you wanted to, um, or you could use a, a sealed capillary, often works the best. For a, a solution, it, you can dip your sample, you dip the capillary into your sample. The sample is quinine, 10 nanograms per microliter. Remember that mass spectrometry is a fairly sensitive technique, so you do not need the concentration to be all that high. So in this case, we can just dip the capillary into the sample. We can let it dry a little bit. And we can place the capillary into the space between the source and the inlet. This will heat the sample and the helium ions will hit the sample and ionize the sample and send it into the mass spectrometer. It's a good idea to try not to touch either the source or the inlet. We don't want it to be contaminated. If you want, there's a dial on the back here that can adjust the gap to accommodate a larger or smaller sample. Now if we go back to the chromatogram over here, we may see as we put the sample into the source that the ion count goes down. This is normal. This is because our capillary is blocking some of the stream of the ions and those are typically the areas we want to observe our mass. So if we right click and drag on the dip, we should be able to see the mass spectrum and this is the uh, mass of the sample that we put in here. If we click another region we will just get noise. Second time we put it through most of the sample has already been ionized and put into the, into the sample so even though we see the dip we don't see any more of the ion. If I dip it again and then put it through the stream. We see some effect on the, on the trace and hopefully we will see our spectrum again. When you're finished, what you should do is go back to the tune page if you're done taking data, you can click on the hand to stop acquisition. Yes, you really want to stop acquisition. It should put it back where it's showing ions here. That's normal. If you want, you can put it on standby. It's not necessary, but it's a good idea. You can close the spectrum and the chromatogram pages, and then you can go back to the dart source. You can put it on standby and turn the heater off. After the heater temperature has cooled down to room temperature, you can set it to off. That will help us conserve nitrogen. But please remember to at least put it in standby so we don't waste helium. In this case, we'll leave it on nitrogen until the sample has, or until the source has cooled down, and then we're finished.